สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. In this video, I'm going to answer all the questions that you have about the one and only fish sauce. That's right. If you've been following the show, you know it's my absolute favorite ingredient. It is Key condiment in Thai cuisine, and I use it in just about everything. So I do get quite a bit of questions about it. Now, if you want to learn about other Thai ingredients, I do have a playlist that discusses other ingredients. I'll put the link in the description below. So make sure you check that out. All right, let's get started. So at the very basic level, it is the liquid that results from the fermentation of anchovies and salt. That's it. You put a bunch of anchovies and salt together in a big tank. You let it go. The salt will start to draw liquid from the fish, and then fermentation starts happening. And you let that go for 12 to 18 months, and the resulting liquid that comes out—that is your first press, purest, extra virgin fish sauce. However, the fish sauce that you probably have in your pantry or the stuff that's available in the market is probably not that extra virgin fish sauce. Because what most manufacturers do after that is they add salt water back into the same fish and get second press out of it, and they can repeat that and get third press, press fourth press. And you can imagine it gets more and more diluted after a while, right? And so. Then what they do is they combine that first press with the subsequent presses, and so they determine the quality of the fish sauce by how much of that first press is in the final product. So unlike wine, when it comes to fish sauce, you can be pretty sure that price is an indication of quality because, as I explained earlier, the purer the fish sauce, the more expensive it is to make. Like in my coconut milk video, you want to go first of all with the one with the least. Amount of ingredients because the more diluted the fish sauce, the more additives they have to add to it in order to make up for the lack of any real fish flavor. So here are five that I can get uh, locally. Let's talk about what not to get first of all. So this brand right here. Check out the ingredient list: salt, anchovy extract, water, sugar, monosodium glutamate, which is MSG, acetic acid, sodium benzoate, and caramel. That's crazy. There's way too many ingredients for something that should just be fish and salt. God, that smells awful. It doesn't even smell to me like fish sauce. It's some weird, funky liquid. I have never actually tasted this before, so here's the first one for you. Yeah, yeah. It's so incredibly one-dimensionally salty, without any real flavor to it. Yeah. So there's a reason why this is the cheapest of all of these. So the next two have the exact same ingredient list, and they're actually pretty close in price. This one's a little more expensive. If you follow the show, you know that this is the one that I use all the time. This is a very popular brand, but upon like just looking at the label, you wouldn't be able to tell. Aside from the fact that this one's just creepy, um, which one was a better quality fish sauce? The ingredients for both of these is anchovy, salt, and sugar. So here we go, creepy baby brand fish sauce. It's okay. I would say that if this is the only one you have access to, you'll be fine. I'm gonna compare it side by side to Squid Brand, which, by the way, as the label indicates, does not contain any squid in the same way that the baby brand does not contain any babies. Oh, the smell! I already prefer this one. The smell is a lot smoother. I can smell more fish in there. It's got a. It's more flavorful in general, and I find that that's a trend. Is the cheaper brand tends to be saltier without the flavor that comes with it. So this. Again, is the one that I use all the time. It's inexpensive. It's great for your general purpose fish sauce. So the next one is this very popular Vietnamese one. Three crabs brand, and again, it does not contain any crabs. I really like this one. It's very smooth and nice, a little less salty than this one. However, it does break my rule of fewer ingredients is better because this one has just one more ingredient: hydrolyzed wheat protein. Yeah, it's got good fish flavor. It's a little smoother, I find. There might be a little more sugar in here. The salt is not as jarring. 
it is more expensive so i tend to reserve this for things like salad or dipping sauces where i may not want the fish sauce flavor to be so strong because it's a main ingredient so these two are like my sort of everyday go-to fish sauce brands and for those of us who are looking for luxurious fish sauce, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Red Boat Fish Sauce. So by the way, I am not sponsored by Red Boat or by any of these people. Um, so this is the only brand that I am aware of that is that first press purest extra virgin fish sauce. This is just one press straight into the bottle, not mixed with anything. Okay, it's made in Vietnam and you can only get this at specialty uh, grocery store. So I had to track this one down in Vancouver, but you can get this online. So if you're interested, it is listed in my kit. I'll make sure I'll put that link in the description below if you guys want to try it out. Now, look at the color first of all. The color is a little bit more intense and I think that has to do with the fact that it's just got more fish stuff in it. Oh, it's the smoothest of them all. You know how like when you sm spill fish sauce on yourself and you're like, yeah, that's terrible. Like if I were to spill this on myself, I don't think it would be that bad. <laughs> it wouldn't be pleasant, but I think it would be more tolerable because it's a smoother um, aroma, almost like soy sauce-esque. <laughs> the difference is pretty incredible. Like it's so flavorful. Like you can almost taste that this is richer, more full body than say this one, which felt very much um, diluted. And this, by the way, is the only brand with only two ingredients, fish and salt, no sugar, no water, no nothing added. Okay. And it's also high in protein per tablespoon. This guy has four grams as compared to this one, which has two grams and this one, which has zero. And why is protein important? Because protein is indicative of how much real fish is actually in it. And that protein content is the umami flavor that's in the fish sauce. So when you're shopping, that's a good thing to look at too, is the protein content. Also pay attention to sodium content. This is 1490 milligrams per tablespoon, whereas this is 1670. So this is saltier. So when you're cooking, you can put more of this stuff, get more flavor and umami without having as much salt in it. It is expensive, so I would reserve this for things like dips or as your table side condiments, sprinkle it on your eggs, you know, and when you're just cooking it in a stir fry and a curry, these will do just fine. This is very important. What is fish sauce, but not the fish sauce okay so this bottle right here you see this guy it does say fish sauce and i've had somebody tell me that this is what they bought and the dish didn't turn out quite as they were expecting you guys this is not what i'm talking about when i refer to fish sauce it is also fish and salt that's been fermented together but like all of the fish bodies are in here this is a vietnamese product it's a very similar product that we also have in thailand called bla ra or in lao pa de this is an acquired taste for just about everyone. I mean, if you don't grow up eating this stuff, it's gonna take you a while to, um, to get used to. Wah, look at that. God, and it smells awful. <laughs> Let's close this quickly. It's very murky and it does have like a rotten flavor, aroma to it, which I don't think exists with these guys. I totally respect you if you like it, and I can definitely take a little bit in my papaya salad and whatnot, but just to be clear, this is not what I call for when I call for fish sauce, despite the fact that it does say fish sauce on the label. So most Thai people will keep our fish sauce just on the counter, but we go through it a lot, right? So if you're just an occasional user of fish sauce, I would say keep it in the fridge because I find that over time fish sauce does deteriorate in terms of flavor. It'll become more pungent. The color will be visibly darker. It's not going to spoil, like it's not going to go bad. It's not going to make you sick. There's so much salt in there, but the flavor is not going to be as good. And so if you keep it in the fridge, lid on really tight, it slows down that process, I find. Also, if you're not a regular user of fish sauce, don't get a big honking bottle like this. I mean, for some of you, this is going to last you like a whole year, right? Get a little bottle like this. This is actually what my mom always gets now. Then she just leaves it outside, doesn't have to worry about it being in the fridge, and it just doesn't have time to get old. 
options. So if you don't consume animal products or maybe you're allergic to fish, there are a few options out there. So what I do when I cook for vegetarians, for example, is I do a straight substitution, one part to one part soy sauce to fish sauce. However, if the fish sauce is like the only seasoning and it's like a main flavor, I do a combination of soy sauce and golden mountain sauce. You've seen me use this many times. It's a different kind of soy sauce, but it's got a sharper, more intense flavor. And I find that a mix of the two imitates the intensity of fish sauce a little bit better. There is a product on the market called vegetarian fish sauce, like this one right here. I know in English it just says vegetarian sauce, but in French it does say vegetarian fish sauce and in Vietnamese as well. I do not recommend it. Okay, it does not taste good people, I am telling you. And let me show you the ingredient list, okay? Water, salt, sugar, MSG, caramel, flavor, whatever that is, and sodium benzoate, which is a preservative. So it's just a salty, sugary solution with preservatives and flavor added. And whatever flavor that is, it is not good. If you know of a good brand out there of vegetarian fish sauce, please let us know in the comments. Finally, there are recipes online that show you how you can make sort of homemade vegetarian fish sauce. And it's usually just soy sauce infused with a bunch of other ingredients. The recipes vary a lot. So if you want to try that out, by all means, and if you've got a good recipe to recommend, of course, let us know in the comments as well. But if you're not going to use fish sauce that often, sticking with the soy sauce substitution works for me every time. This is what I call salt with personality because yes, the main thing you're wanting to get from it is saltiness, but it also adds a lot of umami flavor, sharpness to the dish, which I absolutely love. So I use it in stir fries, dips, salads, curries, anything. And I encourage you to actually extend the use beyond Thai food and even beyond Asian cuisine. Fish sauce is great in like a bolognese sauce. Anything that's like rich and stewy, a little bit of fish sauce, I am telling you, you can thank me later. And that is it. If you've got more questions, let me know on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And if you have any tricks or tips or comments related to fish sauce, share it with us all fish sauce loving community here in the comments below. And by the way, I just wanted to remind you that if you can't get fish sauce where you are, you can buy them online and they're not expensive. I'll make sure I'll put the link in the description below. And subscribe to the show if you want to see more videos like this. And I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal.